Pokemon is getting old. No, not by reusing assets and lazy game design. I mean, Pokemon is literally almost 30 years old. It's older than me, it's probably older than you, it's older than SpongeBob, and it's older than the Euro. That's basically a British dollar for all my Americans. So it got me thinking how much Pokemon knowledge is going to seep through the cracks and be lost to the passage of time. Like, be honest, do you know what this is? No, probably not. And so I want to make it my mission to present and preserve Pokemon knowledge and trivia from the first 151 all the way up to whatever the latest release might be, even if it is another Gen 1 remake. From glitches and bugs to culture and rumor, we'll catch them all in the Pokemon Time Capsule. So if that sounds interesting, be sure to subscribe and follow along this journey. And I figured today we'd start off with some topics near and dear to my heart. Stop me if you've seen this before. No, it's not just a group of random pixels. Well, I mean it is, but it isn't, but y you get what I'm saying. It's the infamous Gen 1 glitch, Missing No. First documented in the May 1999 issue of Nintendo Power, this glitch could be found by talking to the drunk man in Viridian City, watches catching tutorial for the millionth time, then immediately flying to Cinnabar Island and surfing its shore. If done correctly, you'd be met with the now famous glitch, Missing No. Other than potentially corrupting your save data, Missing No did have the pretty useful power of duplicating items. You'd have to follow an even more tedious process that involved having an item in your six bag slot, but not more or less because it would break your game. Fun. But this meant you could have unlimited Master Balls for the bird trio, I guess. But the most useful item for this glitch was actually rare candies, meaning you could get that level 100 Charizard with ease. Missing No has since lived on through memes and pop culture references, and though they're a bit dated now, it's mostly remembered thanks to being a part of the late 90s Pokemon craze that involved it and, of course, the mainline Gen 1 games. And a big part of that craze was thanks to one factor, trading. Bring all your skill. Be forewarned if you haven't been already, the hottest thing in the 12 and under set is coming soon to a theater near you. Pokemon the movie joins Pokemon the video game and Pokemon the trading card as must-sees and must-haves. Even though Pokemon has always had two games and expected you to trade to complete your Pokédex, it wasn't always easy. Back in the day, you needed this. Still unsure? Well, that, my friends, is the Link Cable. You and your buddy would each connect your Game Boy, head over to the Poke Center, then watch the magic happen. Needless to say, it was not the most intuitive thing ever. The cable could get lost, it could cause problems if you pulled it out mid-transfer, or worst of all, it just didn't have one. And this was the only way to get Alakazam, Gengar, Melotic, and quite a few other Mon for the first three gen of Pokemon. And so in Gen 4 with the DS and its wireless function, Game Freak added wireless trading. Think Arceus. There was local wireless trading, which worked about the same as the first three gens and just needed two games on the same network. Here you could enter private or public wireless rooms and trade or even battle with people on the same network. And that was cool and all, but the real star of the show was the GTS, baby. Here you could deposit a Pokemon and request a specific one in return, and anyone from all across the world could see that and accept that trade. And then the next time you got on, you could check and see maybe someone actually did want to trade their Dialga for my Bidoof. It didn't happen often, but I mean, it did happen. Now trading has been streamlined and you just need the other player's ID and you can trade from anywhere in the game. You don't even have to go to the Pokemon Center. But enough of my rambling. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, again, why not leave a follow while you're here and let me know what you'd like to see covered in the Pokemon time capsule for next time. But once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.